I want to talk to you about an answer to this question. In fact, I want to talk to you about how my answer to this question has changed over the years. And in particular, I want to talk to you about what the answers to that question, your answers to that question, mean for teaching. You have to pick one of these two. There used to be two things on this slide before I sent it off in email, and it got translated into a PowerPoint. And now there is only one. The first one is. <laughs> The second one begins uh, after the period. Students can have original mathematical ideas. You have to pick one of those two sentences. It's supposed to be bulleted separately. That's my daughter, Tabitha. She has mathematical ideas. I want to demonstrate to you, and I want us to take a uh, look at what this might uh, look like in uh, facilitating children's mathematical understanding. You're going to uh, you're gonna have to supply her voice here, so I'll pause for just a moment. I'd had a conversation with her older brother, Griffin. She was getting jealous of the attention. She says this. No, provide it in your own head. So I say to Tabitha, oh, I like the Cullen response. This is good. So I say to Tabitha, OK, what's uh, uh, you, you, me, Tabitha, you, you, me, Griffey, and Mommy are all riding in a car. And she says this. <laughs> is, is Jer Confrey still here? This is our jazz for the day. So I say, uh, I say OK, Tabitha, math class question. What's 2 plus 3, she says. Four. I didn't hear the question mark in your voice. Good. No, Tabitha, I'm sorry, that's not right. No, no, 2 plus 3 is not 4. Six. Also not right. No. 2 plus 3, despite what Common Core may say, is not 6. <laughs> would you like to take, would you like, would you like to try again? Five. Okay, Tabitha, you're guessing. You're guessing, Tabitha, this is not good. So uh, let's try this. Let's try this. Let's uh, imagine that you are at the arcade with your brother. You have two arcade tickets, and Griffey has three. How many of them do you have all together? There's a change. She doesn't give me an immediate answer. This is what happens. Fingers are moving. She turns away from me. She's not looking at me anymore. She's not looking for my response. She thinks. Yeah, nice. I could see you were really thinking there, Tabitha. I like that. I like that. I could see that was different. So because of that, we say because two tickets and three more tickets would be five, we say two plus three equals five. <clears throat> yes, I understand that was one of your guesses, Tabitha. Um, so before I had kids, before I was, got to watch their mathematical development, before I became a teacher and had a chance to uh, watch the mathematical development of my own students, I used to think that doing mathematics, that the people who did mathematics were research mathematicians, my professors at Boston University when I was an undergraduate math major. I used to think that that's what it meant to do mathematics, asking and answering questions at the forefront of human knowledge. And that was an inaccessible world to me. I was good at math, but I wasn't that good at math. Now I know, though, as a result of the interaction I've had with children in my classes, with the children in my own home, now I know that doing mathematics means that I can ask and answer questions at the forefront of my own knowledge. And that's going to be true for my students as well. Here's another child, Braden. This is the nephew of Rafranz Davis, who you heard from just a few minutes ago. Uh, he is going to be our second example. He's eating a taco. I'll tell you more about that in just a moment. <laughs> he came home from school and said this. She, he said, uh, my teacher told me I was wrong when I said that an oval, an ellipse, didn't have diagonal symmetry. And all the kids said I was wrong. You know what? I think they were thinking about congruence, not symmetry. Teacher told me I was wrong. So what did he do? He came home. He got out his aunt's iPad, and he drew this picture. Then pretty soon, he printed it out, and he was cutting out the ellipse, right? He's folding along there and proving to himself, demonstrating the ideas that he has in his mind that were not told to him by somebody else, demonstrating uh, that, in fact, an oval does not have diagonal symmetry. So uh, what is this going to mean for teaching? Well, it's going to mean we're going to replace some of these phrases, which, again, once we're in a nice numbered list before Microsoft got hold of them, uh, we're going to have to replace some of those phrases with some of these. Let me help you make your thinking better. What about? What if? I like how you're thinking about that. Can you explain some more about it? How did you know to do that thing that you just did? That's what it means to do mathematics, and these are the ways that teachers can help to facilitate it. I want to invite you then to do some mathematics by playing with uh, Tabitha's and my favorite toy. This is the multiplication machine. You push the buttons up and down, and they, they pop up, they pop down. Ignore the multiplication facts, nobody cares. The question here is, are there more buttons up or down, and how does the pattern help you know it? 
Then we look at this one, and we're going to test your previous theory against this one and ask you, are there more buttons up or down? And you'll be doing mathematics when you compare your two solutions, because I haven't yet found a solution, a way of thinking about those patterns, but maybe somebody here has one, that helps us know whether uh, there are more ups or downs in both situations. We need new strategies. We need to do mathematics. I'm in overtime. Thank you.